I'm Mark Needham. We're going to mix a song uh, from, by Imagine Dragons called It's Time. And I'm just going to kind of run through the process that I did in 2009 or 10 when I did the song. One of the first things that I would do is probably just take a listen to the ref, see where the band left this song in the studio. This is just an instrumental with no vocals, but at least it'll give me an idea of the vibe that they were, they were listening to in the studio. One of the things I really love about these guys is just their live show. So I'm probably going to try to make this, right off the bat, I'm going to try to make this sound like a big live feeling track. I always like to have my tracks lined up exactly the same way every time. It just makes it so much easier to find anything you're looking for. I know right where to go to find it. So first thing I'll do is I'm bussing three kicks and four snares to the respective channel. I'm just going to go through and get a balance on those mics. The kick out mic has a D112, it's outside the head. That's this mic right here. Some of that sub information is a little too much for me, so I'm probably gonna compress that and just cut a little of the low end out of that so it's a little more consistent. I also hear it kind of wandering. Sometimes I'm getting a big ring, sometimes I'm not. So I'm just compressing that like 4 dB, a fast release. And I'm just filtering out a little of the low down like 38, 40 cycles. So that would be a kind of balance I'd start with with those drums. And I'd just do the same thing for the snare. Between the snare top and the snare bottom mic, whenever I'm going through this, I'm always listening for phase on mics. A lot of people don't. They'll put a mic on the bottom of the snare, but they don't flip the phase when they're recording on that. If you put those two together, all your bottom end's gonna go out of the snares. Always just things to listen for as you're going through the drum mics. So I have two replacement tracks here. I'm probably just gonna go with this one on seven. The other one's adding a little more ring than I want. All right, at this point I would start probably just putting some rough plugins. So I'll probably take those tracks and hide them since they're busing. The kick drum, I'm going to use a few different plugins that I'm going to put on this, which is going to be an SSL. As I work on plugins, I know this MN kick drum one is going to be good for this kind of a sound. You know, so I'll have a lot of those presets that I've kind of saved that are good starting points for me. You'll find I do this a lot where I'll use an SSL, I'll use a Neve, I'll use a Meg EQ. 
I could do this all with one EQ and probably come up with a result that wasn't way different, but I kind of like the certain bands on certain EQs, and that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to put a Fatso compressor on here. I'm going to put a Poltec. Kind of get us in this VEQ. So let me turn these off for a sec. I really like the, the 8K range on this SSL Waves plugin. I'll use this 8K boost a lot on a lot of different instruments. And I'm using their compressor with a fast release. I'm using the filter just to filter, just to slope down from like 70 cycles down so I don't get a big rumbly kick. And I'm also, I like this, the 50 cycle boost. So I use a combination of the cut and a uh, bell curve boost to get kind of a fat bottom, but not an overwhelming down in the 30 cycle range. If I'm getting a little too much click on some of the, uh, some of the attacks from the kick, if a guy's really whacking every fourth beat hard, I'll use the Fatso compressor. On that, I'm going to set the filter like at 400. I'm going to set maybe a 30 millisecond attack, a super fast release. Coming into like the first hit of these courses is a little gets it gets a little too sharp for me, so that's going to pull down some of the top end on those. I like I've always liked the sound of the Poltec pushing that 60 or 100 cycles where you're boosting three and also attenuating three. It adds a nice big kind of fat warmth, so I'm going to do that. The last thing I'm going to do is I use this VEQ a lot to, I like this 27 cycle filter. I just have to be careful. I know I'm going to get a lot of information that has a lot of big low end when I get through this. There's a lot of stomp tracks that I'm going to be trying to get a lot of low end out of those. And I just don't want to, you know, I want to be careful right off the bat to not get a lot of rumbly low end on a lot of crap all the way across the track. Sometimes I'll boost a little more at 100 cycles or, or even 330, depending on the kick drum. I'm just going to use this 27 cycle filter on it. So we'll go from that. I'll go to a snare, which is going to be, let me start with that one. I use this AK boost a lot on this on this particular EQ. I'm also boosting like a bell at 200 cycles just to get a little more bottom. So again, it's just kind of a starting point that I know, especially in this particular rock world, I'll use this, my Mark Needham snare one. I just worked on a lot of stuff and it's a good starting point for me. So I'm boosting a little bit at 3K, you know, quite a bit at eight and been boosting at 200. I have a fast release compressor, like a three to one, and I might be compressing down a dB or so on this. It's a really soft compression. And I pull that 200 cycles back like a dB. Sometimes I'll start at eight or nine. I'm back to about seven, something now. I'll probably try a couple other things on this. I want to hear this Maggie Q, and I want to hear, let's do this. This Maggie Q. $200. 
2.5 on, I'll use that several places, probably up a half a dB. I don't hear like a big boost in the EQ with this, but it adds like a kind of a nice punch to me. And I'll probably distort this snare just a little. Trying to add a little crunch, a little more sustain to the snare. I'm always using like three parallel compression buses on the drums, which are doing different things. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to run through these compressors. I'm, I'm using three different ones to kind of do three different things and add in some different amounts of, of a little aggressive distortion. I mean, this is an alternative rock track, and I'm looking for pretty aggressive slightly distorted drums. This is this Fab Filter Pro C. I'm using that with a super fast release, really like 10 to one compression. And I'll use that, especially in the snare, hi-hats, things like that, to really, a, a really tight smack on, that, on the snare and hi-hat. I'm using a, another bus here, which I'm just using on the kick and snare, which is a combination of three things, which is, uh, the API 2500, which I'm just using to compress down just on the kick and snare about 2 dB, along with a variable muse set it in, in limit mode that I'm using a super fast release on. And then I'm using a decapitator that are, I'm probably pushing about to drive of five or so. And that's just to get a little, a little more aggression on the kick and snare. So that would be like... Just setting those compressors so they're the variable muse may be coming down to dB, the API 2500 about 2 dB, and then just pushing the decapitator. The kick and snare are both running through those two chains. The snare is also going to be running to a couple different reverbs. I'm going to use this Oceanway plugin, which is set up on Studio 2, which is probably one of my favorite rock rooms in the world. I usually put the drums on that wall and do room mics back over here when I'm over at East West. So I'll use a little of that on the, maybe on the kick, probably not the kick on this one because I have a lot of other roomier stops, but I'll use a little bit on the snare and on the toms, just add a little extra life. I'm just getting enough of that room in to fill out just a slight stereo spread. I'm not looking for a huge room off of that. Let me try this as well. This Revive Bright Ambient snare here I sometimes like as well. So I would probably use a combination of that shorter and longer one. So I'm still not like super happy with the low end on this kick. I might start for just a minute with some of this, a little of this R bass in there, just adding a little more sub information that I might lose that as I get more kicks in. We'll see.
what I'm doing is just trying to a little less compression on that kick. He's really there's a lot of dynamics on this kick, and when he's hitting it hard, I really hear the bottom end compressing down. I'm usually always have my kick drum because of these parallel compression buses. My kick and snare are going to be pretty low on the faders. I always end up almost in the pretty close to the same spot. I'll always start my kick at around minus 28 along with these parallel buses. I usually end up in almost that exact same position by the end. I try to really not have creeping faders. Usually at the end of my mix, everything will be generally about the same as the starting point. A lot of times that means just stopping and bringing some stuff down. So the next thing I'll get onto is overheads. And again, I'm gonna just kind of move through these pretty fast and then we'll go back and look at the whole drum chain. I have kind of an overhead, couple overhead starting places, and we'll probably go with this one, which has a little bit of a boost at 400, and again, this 8K boost up here. We'll throw in a different compressor instead of this one. Let's go an LA-2A. So let me just hear the one symbol. On this, I'm just boosting, you know, doing an 8K boost again. I'm boosting also around 400, just do a little bit warmer cymbals. Not much compression off the SSL, but picking up a little more with this LA-2A, compressing down 2 or 3 dB. So I'm just going to drag that exact same set of plugins over to my other overhead. And then I have a ride cymbal too. This ride, I have... I have a little bit different setting that I like. The symbols I'm going to usually send just to two of these parallel compression buses. So I'm going to send that just to this one, which is where I'm looking for where I have the hi hat symbols and snare. That's the super kind of crunchy mid range compression. And I'll also be sending it to this one, which is a super hard saturated compression. On this one, I have. I'll go back to these, but I have four things in a row that are kind of getting a, a fairly kind of crunchy compressed distortion on the drums. So I've been able to see my level of those against the kick drum. Hi hat, I'm using a few different things. I'm going to put a a tape simulator on it. I'm going to use an Omnipressor and I'm going to use this SSL. So it's going to be a combination of those three. I don't know how much hi hat he's really playing here, not a lot. Having recorded on analog for many years, I kind of like what an analog, just to feel what an analog tape recorder does to a hi hat with the tape compression. So I'm emulating that a little bit with the, with the combination between this and this Omnipressor. So I'll set super fast release. I'm going to send that to those same two buses that the overheads are in. I always put drums drummer's perspective since I was a I was a part-time guitar player and drummer. I'm just I'm so used to hearing drums that way that I always I've 
been doing my drums drummer's perspective for since probably the 70s i guess i've always done it that way tom let's find some toms we'll keep going through these get the rooms and we'll go back through the whole set I was just listening for the amount of symbols to see if I'm going to need to do any gating on those, but they're not bad. But mostly on this floor, Tom. What I want to do is get a little clarity on the top end and the attack, but I don't want it to get ticky, so I'm pulling that top end back a little bit. So I'm going to boost around maybe five or six a little bit for attack and probably about 1.8. I'm picking up a little bit of bottom around 90 or 100 cycles here. Compressing very lightly. Two four tom mics. So there was two floor tom mics. I just wanted to listen what they were together and make sure that they're, you know that they're not out of phase or that one's not rumbly. It looks like there's an overdub set of toms as well. Let's see what these are. That's just an overdub, like maybe another take of that same tom, right? It's the exact same time. Let's pull that over. I'm going to use the same overhead compression bus on these toms as well. I'm also going to put a little of that room. This is in five and six. The, we have the snare going into the Ocean Way 2 room. Let's drag that same amount across the other ones here. I want to go onto these room mics really quick. I'm probably going to start with there's the multi-band compressor just to pull down a little of the overheads to big crashes in there so I get more of the actual room sound of the drums. So that would be the first thing I do. I'm just pulling down those crashes 4 or 5 dB. Let's go with this room here. On this one, I'm boosting a little bit at around 1.8, about 6, 6Ks and around 100 cycles. Pulling back some 500 cycles. Trying to warm up and keep those kind of lower mids really, really kind of booming through this track. There's a left and right room. Let's just put that same thing on both those and hear both together. I 
always good to listen to both sides of your pair of left, right room mics. Sometimes one will be a completely different microphone or EQ'd weird or a bad patch on their compressor when they're recording. So sometimes those can be wildly different, but these sound like they're actually the same, which is good. So I have another stereo pair of room mics. I'm going to listen to those real quick. These are really compressed. I'm just trying to compress that cymbal down enough. I can have the room mics loud without just an overbearing cymbal. These are already compressed a little bit. I'm putting just a little more to even it out. I want to be able to get just a kind of nice continuous rumble of those toms going. Let me show those together. As you're going through your overhead pairs, room pairs, I'll have some mono rims. Just always listen as you're putting those all together, summing together that they're not out of phase with each other or out of phase with the kick drum or the rest of the set. A lot of times you'll hear your bottom drop away, you know, something's out of phase. Or if you hear this kind of weird stereo spread. Middle sucks away, you know, something's wrong. So I'll get those two rooms together. Let me look at these mono rooms. Same thing, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this multi-band across all those, just to again trying to keep my symbols manageable. Good. And then next last one. E series for these as well. I'm gonna look for some more kind of uh, instead of the 8K thing, I'm gonna look for some more in the mid range in the three to five range and probably drop the low end more down to closer to 50 cycles and really get some kind of a little more aggressive super bottom and, uh, and upper mids down the middle on the mono mics. Something like that, boosting kind of around four or so, and on the top, 4K, I'm going to filter a little of the bottom out at 50, and then also boost at 50 on a bell, just to get kind of a nice little curve, but with a steeper roll-off on the bottom inside. Let me hear that across all three of these. I'm going to stay away from the fast release on this. It's kind of getting that nice continuous rumble with the release back a little on the compressor. This room mic right here is out of phase with the other one. Flip that out of phase, I can hear the bottom again. 
So the face is wrong on that one. I want to hear this first mono mic against the kick drum because it's out of phase with two in a row, so it makes me suspect that maybe it's out. No, it's right, and the other two are out of phase. You know, a good idea to really keep an eye on the phase. It's funny. I mean, I see this with kick drums, with room mics out of phase, where people have 15 kick drums in the session and the kick is still barely audible. They have all these phase issues and they just keep adding in more and more stuff. So you might get some real subs on the kick and maybe some top, but most of the kick is missing because it's just out of phase. In the case with those two mono mics right there, we would have really just losing a lot of bottom on the toms and the room mics and in the kick drum. We've got one last thing in this, just our first set of drums, which is there's an, actually a whole other stereo drum track that's just playing along with this as well, along with these drums. It's a stereo drum track pre-recorded. I'm going to do a couple things on that. I'm going to... I'm going to do kind of the same thing that I'm doing on that mono room. I'm going to make this super aggressive. So I'm compressing that a bunch. Let's see. Try something else here. It's not really killing me. So I'm gonna do something like this. I'm gonna put this decapitator, put the thump function on, which adds a little more low end. I'm just going to roll the whole top end back. I'll just do a high cut on the decapitator. Let me just go back to this whole drum set really quick. Just get a better balance and see how that other kit's going to fit in here. So I'm just going to mute the whole drum set again. When we originally started here, I just started with my three kicks and my, however, five snares. I got a balance on those that I liked. That balance is not really going to change, so I'm just hiding those. All the kicks are bust to the kick return. All the snares are bust to the snare return. So they're not part of the actual drum group. I just muted all my drums. I'm going to start with the kick again. First thing I'm going to do, I see my kick's getting a little loud for me. I can see already I brought it up. So I'm, going to, I'm just going to bring that whole drum group down a little bit and just get started here, just getting a balance between everything. I want a little more crack out of the snare. I'm going to use an API 560. And I'm just pushing a little 4K with that.
I'm gonna call that whole that whole group will be uh, drum one, I guess here. On the drum too. Like, luckily, we don't have like 80 tracks of drums on here, but we've got a few more to go. So I'm going to mute those for a minute. I'm going to see just what I have here. It looks like I've got a few snares. So I've got just one machine kick, one, two machine snares. I'm going to move this original live kick down. I'm going to pull these across. I'm going to use something pretty similar. And I'll probably use this same parallel compression buses. Let me see here. Pull that back. All right, so let's go to, we're going to go to this kick drum for a minute. I'm going to tone down that, that high end click on this one for starters. Let me take the rest of these off for a minute. Yeah, I'm going down a couple dB with that fatso. Pick up a little more 50 cycles with this and a 27 cycle filter with this VEQ. And I'm pulling down a little bit, this, this, around this 300. All right, let me hear that with my other kick drum real quick. Make sure everything's phase aligned. We hear the snare, just making sure that those, what the phase was like between those two kicks. So on this, I'm just picking up a little of that kind of that 800 range, just trying to get a little more mid-range out of this snare, but compressing it so it's not getting too jagged. Again, back to these uh, these two kicks. 
these are time aligned together so they're not flaming. So I'm really trying to keep kind of a live feel on this. The machine drums are actually quantized in with the live drums. I mean, I usually go one to the other. Sometimes I'll let them, I'll let the flams go. Sometimes the flams is a cool thing. It's kind of a, it's a judgment you got to make song by song. In this case, there's going to be, I, I know there's a lot of tracks of stomp claps that are going to go with this. And so we're going to get a lot of flaming. I don't think we needed to have any more, especially with the bottom end. Now we have our first live drum set and our machine drums here. A lot of tracks of kind of stomp claps here. What I'm trying to do is just pick up a little more warmth and bottom out of these things. We're gonna make a, we're gonna make a pretty big deal out of these stomp claps. So there's a bunch of them here. I'm gonna drag this across as a starting point here, and then just go through all these. As I remember, they're all pretty similar. At least these sets of stereo ones. These first ones I think are all pretty much the same. And uh, this is next one. Oh, it snaps, all right. The snaps, I'm just really kind of pushing around 1500 cycles. With a bell there. Let me just take a look at what the rest of these, the stereo ones are. I think we have four more sets of claps. Let me double check. We got two claps. It's another stomp there. Hold on. Let me, I'm going to move these back. Sometimes they're not quite in order. So that should be the same as this. So I've got those. We've got two snaps. And I think we have three claps. So let me look at these claps here really quick.
So these claps I'm going to compress just a little bit. I, I, I want to keep them kind of uneven. I don't want them too even. I'll do a boost at, again, 1.5, but probably not a bell this time. Just on both these claps just to get a little, a little more clarity out of them. We have one last track, which is kind of a combo track, I think, right? Let's get a quick level on all of these. Then we're going to go on to our next set of stomp claps. These are all stops. I definitely want like a little more low impact out of this batch. Let's go to this R base again here. I want that, like that more of that kind of energy on these. And then let's go. Yeah, so I'm going to try to push a little more bottom and just make sure I get enough mid-range on these so they really cut through the track when I get all this together. This is kind of a really crushed version of that. I'm gonna put a little less R bass on that one because it's getting pretty rumbly. And then let me see what these last ones are. I'm gonna drag this R bass across those as well. And this, this whole group is gonna have a lot more low end in it. That'll be our Domp Clap Group 2. And then we'll put all this together and hopefully we'll have something close to a drum set here.
So again, just going through my drum one, I was bringing my level down overall on that, so I'm not again getting too much creep. And then we got our drum set two with that on the chorus here. That'll give us a general starting point for our drum group here. Let's go to our bass. Uh, I should have a bass, a bass DI track. We just have the one bass DI. So what I normally do in these situations, I'll mult that bass DI track, and I'm going to make two separate amplifier chains out of it. So I'm going to use this B15, and I'm going to make a couple different amp chains here using that. So I'm going to go back to this SSLE again. So I'm going to push like around 2.2 around eight or nine hundred i'm pushing a little bit at three and a little bit at 50 cycles lightly compressing i'll go back to this amp for a minute on this one i have the high off and i'm using the ultra low mode so i'm using this for like the low end side of the amp so i'm not going to go for the super punchy top on this channel that's going to happen more on the duplicate that i've done of it i'll end up with two bass amps that i can alter depending on if i need a little more top on choruses i can just kick that up so i'm pushing you know a little bit of top some mid-range on this but not a lot We're going to use this fatso again to compress some of the top end down on this. So I'll go to like 280 on the high pass filter. I'll go again, take a 30 millisecond attack, fast release. I'm just trying to tone down some of those parts where they really attacks hard again. We're going to do this V EQ. I'm going to punch a little bit more at 100 and probably do this 27 cycle roll off. I'm just pushing a shelf at 100, a little more 680. It makes it a little bit lower frequency than I'm doing on the E channel. I'm pushing a little more 2.2, just trying to get a little more pick out of this low side. I'm going to pull this chain over to what's going to be my higher inside of the base. The main thing I'm going to do different, I'm going to take this low off. I'm pushing a lot more of the mid-range treble. I don't have that super low end on this. I'm pushing the amp a little harder so I get a little distortion. My E will stay about the same. I'm using a little more compression on it. Maybe 
maybe a hair more on the fatso. Just trying to keep this smooth because I'm going to be pushing more top. On this uh, V on the high side, I'm going to do a shelf at like 330 and then roll it off at 47. <laughs> I can go back and really adjust the balance between those two, depending, you know, if I'm not, if, if I get a lot of stuff with high frequency information, it's going to start phasing out the top end of that bass. I can just add a little more of the, of the high side to punch through. Drums and bass on the guitars. We have some acoustic guitars, mandolin part, a sitar part. Uh, there's several acoustic things, which are actually going to be a pretty big part of this song. Let's start with acoustic one here. That's a little boxy and super compressed sounding. I'm going to, again, I have a lot of presets set up so that I have like probably five or six different acoustic ones that, and I kind of know where I want to go with them. So I'm just modifying that preset well, quite a bit on this one, but we're going to do a couple other things here. I use this silver face a lot on acoustic guitars, the aggressive stuff in like rock music. I had a lot of these when I first started. I had two or three racks of them and I kind of got used to the sound of them. So we're going to do that. I'm going to go back to this V EQ as well on this. I'd like to get a little more sparkle out of this guitar. So I'll probably boost at like 15 and maybe at three. I'm rolling off some at 45. I don't need a lot of low information on this, I don't think. We have that acoustic, we have a mandolin. I can use these same plugins, I'll just modify them a bit. I'm pushing some at 450 on this, pulling back that top a little bit, but definitely pushing a little more of the warmth than I was on the acoustic. I'm again, a slight compression with 1176. Not quite as much of that spanky top as we had on the uh, acoustic. When we get this mandolin and the AC together, we'll make a group out of those. Our next group of acoustic stuff is, I think, is a little more of the melody. There's that melody that everybody recognizes when the song comes on. I'm going to drag these same plugins. I'm going to use some variation of these plugins on all three of these. Let's start with this mando. I'm going to take these off for a minute.
So again, I'm just adding a little of that 450, a little bit of upper high mids. At 1176. Don't need that VEQ on this one. Let me find my mandolin in the bridge. Hopefully it's pretty close. That's back into the strumming mando, which I've actually... It's set up over here. It's just another version of that track. Let's take a listen to that. I'm going to move that one over because it's just a strumming track like the other Mando. I'm going to change this first group that I made since that's actually kind of part of that first AC1 group there. So there's a sitar and a mandolin that are playing the melody, and those will be our second kind of acoustic group here. So there's just a sitar on its own. I'm going to keep that same start on the E. I mean, I like that low end and that kind of 450 thing and all these and a little of this top. Let me see this compressor. I'm compressing that a little bit harder than the other ones. I just only want to keep that rolling melodic thing, which I think will kind of smooth this whole thing out. use this for just a little of this 3.3 let me get a balance between the and amanda It's a catchy melody. We left off at electric guitars. Here we go. We've got a few different e bows here. I might put up what I would what my just my normal start starting point for an electric guitar. I have a combination of three EQs that I use. I might not use all of them, but a lot of times I'll just start. Usually I find in any, any guitar situation with these, I can kind of mold what I want. Sometimes I'll swap one of these out for an API 560. So with this Evo, I'm probably going to go, I'm going to use that 8K on this SSL again, which I like a lot. And a little bit of compression on it. And then I use a Neve 1081 to push like, I push a little at 1.8. I'll probably push a little lower mids, like 400 with it. And 
And then this Maggie Q that I talked about earlier, I really love this 2.5. I use it a lot. Depending on the microphone they use on the guitars, I use this sub on the uh, Maggie Q a lot. If I don't have two mics, a ribbon and a 57 or something, I'll use that to kind of get that bigger sound. I'm not necessarily a big fan of multiple mics on guitar cabs, but if they're in phase, it can be great, and this kind of can emulate that, that same feel of having two mics. And then I also use this SPL harmonic generator a lot, just to add a you know a little extra upper end of harmonics. So I only have three guitars on this, so I'm just gonna drag those same plugins across all three of those, and then go back and modify them. So I have two Ebos. Second Evo is a little bit brighter, so I'm going to pull some top off of it. Let me go back to this other Evo. The first one's in the verse, the other one's in the chorus, so it needs to get a little brighter, but... Now we've got, we have looks like five pianos. Some are doing some low notes. Let's just go through the pianos one at a time. I'd probably start with this E again. I'm pushing like seven. 1.8, maybe 800 or so, and then pushing a little little bottom at like two. And I changed the release to pretty fast release on this. Let me find the other piano that plays with that. So we got a big low end one here. I think I have another octave here. Let me check that out real quick. I might drive that one a little bit. Let me hear all three of these together. I forgot one guitar. Let's go back. Let me go to the end here. So this is a super crunchy guitar. I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull this compression back.
I'm going to pull that sub back on the mag too because it's just getting really muddy. So let's keep going. Let me look at these other two piano tracks and then we'll kind of judge all these pianos together. There's two more. I'm going to solo all these and kind of get a blend on them here. I'm just going to reverse the pan on these two because they're both kind of left heavy they're on the left hand of the piano. So I'm going to reverse those to kind of double that. We'll get more of the feeling that the low note being doubled. And then I'll go back to this last two tracks here again. Overall, these pianos are pretty dry. Again, I'm trying to keep him with our big room. I'm gonna just pull a little bottom out of that reverb. Soon we'll be at the point where we can actually go back through all this stuff and make it sound like a song. So I've got, looks like maybe four or five cents here. Let me see what everybody's doing. Okay, so that's a nice big heavy one. Let's, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double that, just make it a little wider. I need to push a little more top and control the bottom a little more. I'm just gonna push a little top. Let me try like a little 800 too, just to get that bottom. We're compressing that with a little bit, not a super fast release. Trying to push some 800 and 2.5 thing that really helps to clear up the bottom end when you have a lot of low end in something that will help get it, make it really cut through the track. And I think spreading the stereo is going to allow it to cut through the track a little more, be able to keep it down and level, but still there it come in. Let me see what these are doing.
Let's here I go. Let's put an SSL on these. So I'm going to actually pull some, like that 8K off of both of these. Let's throw a compressor on both of these. Not quite that much. Something like that range. And then I'm going to try this kind of filtery delay on both these as well. Maybe change a little bit from on each side. It still sounds kind of mono to me. I'm going to put a, another doubler on the right hand one of these. Take the direct side off and just use a delayed version of it, slightly pitched. Pitch it up and down like, I don't know, nine or ten, something like that. Press that a little harder. So that. Let me see what these last two tracks are. I'm going to compress these again, like three to one, and you know, I'm boosting like at one, nine, or two K, something like that, but filtering a little of the top end off above that. This one, I'll get a little more string-like by boosting at eight K and then put these two together. I'm trying to pick up the kind of high mid rangey bell thing with that first one, cutting some top and then getting more of the string topped with the second more sustainy synth. We have a crowd sample here. It's the NFL cheering crowd. All right, perfect. Yeah, another thing I'm just feeling overall on this track, I'm running a stereo bus across like all the instruments, including my drum oxes. 
what I'm going to try to do is even get this. I still feel this needs to be like kind of roomier and bigger overall. So let me throw in another bus here. I'm going to throw something really big, like a stadium here. Let me just hear this for a minute. I'm going to shorten that a little bit and take some bottom out. Let me go back to the top. That might be a little long still. I'm just trying to get a blend between that the mandolin, sit sitar, and these two. Synth. That synth is still really left heavy. Hold on, uh, let's see. Let me try to blend those in. So I'm kind of digging this stadium. This isn't something I would normally do. Let me just, I'm gonna shorten it up a little bit. So yeah, we're going to stick with this reverb, this big reverb on everything. I kind of dig it. It sort of gives the track kind of like a cool little wash, which is nice. Lead vocal. Hey, we're making progress here. The city never sleeps at night. It's time to begin. I have a kind of, again, a pretty standard vocal chain that I'll put up. I know I can probably accomplish whatever I want with this. A de -er. We're going to do... A wedge 1176, take that noise thing off, which I hate. We're going to do a second de -er, and I'll show you why, why I'm doing two de -ers in a minute. We'll do an SSL EQ. We're going to do... Let me go this, pull tech. And I'll show you why I'm doing all of these in just a second. We're going to put, some people might call this overkill, but I used to do this same thing when I was on a console. I would, I used every patch cord in the studio. Again, you can accomplish a lot of what I'm doing without using this many plugins. I just happen to, I have things that I like mid range of one EQ better than another. And I happen to have enough DSP power. I could like put this stuff across 90 channels. So the first thing I'm going to use this fab filter de -er, I'm going to set just like at a, in a wide band mode and just try to hit the really big kind of top. The city never sleeps. In, the city never sleeps at night. It's time to begin, isn't it? Especially like that first line of the chorus is always. The city never sleeps at night. It's time to begin. Let's look at this 1176, which I'm going to set attack at noon, super fast release. He never sleeps at night. It's time to begin, isn't it? I get a I'm going down to maybe 5 dB. I'm pitting this pretty hard. So then the second de -esser, I'm going to set as a pretty narrow band, right about 6.5. 
Let's go back to the city never sleeps line. The city never sleeps at night. It's time to begin. Is it? The city never sleeps at night. It's time. To the city never. The city never. The city never sleeps at night. The city never. So I'm just using that to get just some super high acid. I want to be able to get enough top in on this vocal. They're, they're really feeling aggressive and clear to me, but you know, without those S's taking your head off. I'm starting, I usually start this vocal EQ with this SSL. Again, I like that 8K. These two bands here, I've wanted about four, one around 2.5 depending on how aggressive I want to push the mid-range on this vocal. I'll usually start like maybe around 2 dB. Yeah, they're right around there now. So I'm going to push a little at 8K, a little bit at like the 4 and 2.5. I'm going to pull back some 160. And then I'm going to use, I'm going to use this Pultec at 100 to try to get basically a proximity effect of the mic so you're getting that really kind of boomy bass so it really sounds like somebody's right on the mic kind of feel the city never sleeps at night it's time to begin is it the city never sleeps at night it's time to begin isn't it i get a little bit bigger but then i'll admit i'm just the same as i was Sleeps at night, it's time to begin, isn't it? I get a little bit bigger, but then I'll the city never sleeps at night, it's time to begin, isn't it? I get a little bit bigger, but then I'll admit I'm just the same as I Yes, yeah, so I'm I'm kinda of pulling back a little that, that 160, just trying to get the feel of the low end but not get the vocal too tubby. Tonight, it's time to begin, isn't it? I find sometimes this Meg sub does that in an interesting way without getting that kind of tubby 160. The city never sleeps at night, it's time to begin, isn't it? I get a little bit. It adds kind of a nice feel on that bottom, so I'm trying to push that. I might push a little of my Magic 2.5 on that Meg again. The city never sleeps at night, it's time to begin. And I'll probably push the decapitator like on three or so on this. The city never sleeps at night. It's time to begin, isn't it? I get a little. I'll pick out a couple reverbs. I'm gonna do a combination of two reverbs: one a little shorter, one longer. I'm going to use this 250 to just kind of spread the vocal a little bit, feel like a little bit of a stereo feel out of it. The city never sleeps at night, it's time to begin, isn't it? I get a little bit bigger, but that I'm not sure about this reverb, this longer reverb yet. We'll see when I get it the track. The city never sleeps at night, it's time to begin, isn't it? I get Now, our breasts are getting a little big here, too. Hold on, let me go back. So I'm just toning that compression down a little bit.
let's leave that for a minute. I've got some background here. I'm going to pull that, that de-esser over. I'm going to pull a few of these elements over. Again, I'm not pulling that Pultec over. I'm not going to have this try to sound as close on the mic. I don't ever want to leave this town. I don't ever want to let you down. I don't ever want to leave this town. I don't ever want to let you down. I don't ever want to leave this town. I don't ever want to let you down. I don't ever want to leave this town. The reason I'm using these two compressors, I'm using this one as a super fast release and a little harder compressor. I, I just try to pick up just like one, one dB of compression with this LA-2A just to really kind of smooth it out a little bit. I don't ever want to let you down. I don't ever want to let you down. I don't ever want to let you down. Again, sometimes if I have something where I know it's, I got five BVs that are pretty much the same, if I can get, I get one pretty close, I can just pull them over and then, then jump through each one individually and know I'm going to be pretty close. It won't take as long to tweak. So this first BV is... I normal instinct we'd probably to pan these left right from each other and this track since I'm really trying to go for more of a live feel I'm going to keep this vocal and it's double just off to the right a little bit again trying to keep this more of a live feel than a big than a big production feel so this is why, so this is why you fell and I am left to sell the path to heaven so this is why you fell and I am left to sell so this is why you fell, and I am left to sell. So this is why you fell, so this is why you fell. Yeah, I'm just checking those compressor and the DS on those, make sure we're not hitting anything too hard. So then we have. So this is why you fell. I'm just keeping these all right. On um, this one, we have a guy doing one line here. And I'm putting a subtle DS on all these. I just don't want S's to build up with that in the lead vocal. Giving the commodities a rain. Giving the commodities a rain. Giving the com giving the commodities a range. Yeah, so I'm gonna leave all of her vocals right, and then his one vocal where he comes in on the the other uh, vocals, I'll leave slightly left. Just really again going for the going for the big band type thing. Let me look at a quick effect on those as well. Not that. Let's do that. Just kind of thinking about what kind of verb I wanted to start with on these BVs, which I think will be just an EMT, nothing too crazy or wild. I'm just shortening that up a little bit, pulling a little of the bass out of the plate, a little more top. And then 
I got a gang. I'll make this a little simpler here. We're just gonna go, let me go back to this vocal. So I'm just going to go back to this E with just like a tiny bit of top end and, a, you know, maybe a CB in these upper mids. Not much at all. And just use, I'm going to use a soft compression. These are just duplicate tracks here. That one, that one, that one. So those are all going to be... So those are all duplicates of each other. Then these stereo tracks, let me look at that for a minute. These are all just in a room. They're already pretty compressed. I'm going to put maybe just an extra dB or so of compression. I'm not really doing any EQ on this. I'm going to drop that across these room mics. These are all just multiple passes of the same thing. I'm going to get just a rough idea of what my stereo bus channel is going to look like. And I switch this up every now and then just because I get bored and want to change to something else. Right now, I, this is kind of what I'm using on a stereo bus channel, which is like a lot of crap, but I kind of like the way it's working. Right now, I'm just going to tweak so there's, these compressors are just barely hitting. So I'm just going to take everything off to start with this Shadow Hills. And I'm going to kind of roughly set how I think I'm going to be using these compressors. I'll have them pretty light right now. Just with the optical side of this, I'm going to p try to pick up about a half a dB, maybe a dB of compression, just a real soft with that. I'm also using SSL compressor, their stereo bus compressor. I'm using that at a really fast release. Trying to pick up maybe an extra dB or so of compression. So it's kind of a combination between the Shadow Hills and the SSL or what I'm looking for. And I'll kind of massage that when I really get to all the levels up. I use this K Stereo a lot, which I really like. I kind of like the MS Gain on this. It really gives that kind of stereo spread without really getting that phasey feel that a lot of them get. I'm going to use this Meg EQ to kind of just do a sub overall a little bit on this track. I'm just using that to kind of just warm up overall the feel of the bottom. I have two EQs that I use, either the Meg or this Precision EQ. And I do a combination of those two, just between top and bottom. You hear this one? Normally I would probably push this 9K 
I'm going to leave that flat for right now, too. I'm, going to, I'm pushing like a little extra bottom at 68 with this as well. At least the past year or two, I'm using kind of a combination of two analog tape recorder simulators put together. So I'm using this ATR at 15 IPS. Sometimes I put this one behind it too. I like the sound of these two together. This this Kramer has kind of a nice little kind of crunch thing on the top end. I don't always use it, but I'll leave it on this song. Well, I usually have a limiter running on here. That I'll usually set it to one of the last things that I'll set after the tracks, you know, I really have the levels that I want. be like maybe a, a half dB of limiting. So this will be super subtle. I'm using a maximizer to just elevate the levels. I run my, generally run my stereo bus levels like without anything on it. I'm running them pretty low. It's maybe minus eight, minus nine, and then I'm picking up with some final gain at the end. Sometimes I find just like hitting, getting really hot on Pro Tools and everything, it, it sometimes it really starts to feel like the stereo field collapses to me. I don't know if that's just me, but I've heard other people have the same feeling about it. Yeah, I have a kind of a rough setting where the master's going to be. Um, I just made an overall band group and muted everything. Then I'm going to just start going through the whole thing and putting things up and really kind of fine tuning my levels. Um, from that point, we'll just print the automation across my basic starting point, do some master fader rides, and then we can go back in and tweak stuff. But hopefully we can get it close to that it feels pretty much like the song running through. So I'm just going to go to a chorus here, start bringing on my drums and just double check all my levels. In this process, if you're going back through, is to turn stuff down more than stuff up. Usually where I set my drum levels when I first started a mix is usually exactly where they end up being at the end. So if you can, you know, just not get that fader creep, everything's louder, that, it's, that's a real easy thing to do and just try to hold back from that. You'll be, you should be able to go through this pretty quickly and, and get everything, make sure you're not burying stuff.
I would do something like that. Well, I'll make a master group here for my master faders. I'll go through on the master fader and just do a ride. I started probably 1 dB on the intro. I'll go down 1.8 on the verse. Coming into the course, I'm going to swell a little bit and then do a hard drop right to zero. Coming back, there's like a little re-intro. Coming back into the second verse, I'm going to come back down. Basically, I'm just going to ride the dynamics a little bit and really make, make those choruses really pop when the dynamics hit. So we've got our kind of master fade ride in. There's one last thing I want to check on the stereo bus, which I use this multi-band a lot to keep the bottom big, but not get too big on these kick down beats. Especially, you know, you're going alternative rock where they just want the levels like stupid loud. You know, you have one giant kick and it's going to just completely distort the track. That multi-band to compress down, you know, a couple dB on the big hit. This would normally be a, maybe a two and a half hour process for me from beginning to end. This is kind of where I'd probably take a stopping point, take a 10 minute break, come back with fresh ears. Generally, that's what my mix would sound like. I mean, I, this would be pretty close. This is probably a half an hour away from twe in tweaks from where I ended up on the album.